Welcome to Wednesday night of our annual missions conference here at Fig Tree Anglican Church. I'm joined tonight by Rod Story from EE International. And we're going to be talking about EE Hope for Kids. I'm going to say as a child of the 80s, this has all the words that work for me. It's about Ethiopia, it's got kids and it's got hope. If you're a child of the 80s, you know what I mean. <laughs> but I'm going to talk to Rod instead. Rod, E. Definitely not a child of the 80s, that's all right. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> EE Hope for Kids is a project of EE International. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what EE International is? Sure, I'll be really glad to do that and thank you for joining in to join with us tonight. Uh, EE International has basically three key focuses. First of all, we want to teach people how to know and understand the gospel so they can explain it to their friends. So learning it, then being able to share it, and so training people who can, in the local church, learn how to share their faith, or in a children's program, learn how to share their faith, and train leaders who will do that job. So that's pretty well what we do all over the world. So we've got equipping, training, and witnessing. Correct. Good things. All things together. How do you fit into the organisation? What's your role with EE International? Well, my current role uh, is what they call the Executive Vice President for EE International, but I actually started doing EE way back before when you were a child of the 80s. I was actually <laughs> learning how to be a youth worker in the 80s. And that's where I learned how to do this. But my key role, I have two key things I do now. And the first of those is I oversee the global work that goes on with EE International. So we have uh, about 100 nations which have indigenous ministries. That means they're led by local people. They have their own board. And we, my job is to oversee that. I work with the continental directors who help us to oversee that work. Uh, and it's really an exciting part of what I do. But the second part, which we're here to talk about tonight primarily, is I work with the Hope for Kids program. I direct the program. And uh, the program, uh, Shane, actually began here in Wollongong some years ago. We had a similar program, but in Wollongong, we gathered together leaders from around the world and they came and built this Hope for Kids program. Uh, they built it here, and Fig Tree has used it itself, actually, over those years with people like Virginia Woodward, um, Steph, uh, and, of course, uh, Jenny and the, and the team now use Hope for Kids here. So that's where we began with the Hope for Kids program in 2010. But about two years ago, I remember sitting down here and having a conversation with Ian Barnett one night, because I'd just been hearing about the work of potential ministry in Ethiopia. One of your favourite things to think about, obviously. Absolutely. Um, and so I said to Ian, how would you like to be a part of helping us to equip literally tens of thousands, perhaps millions of people, children in Ethiopia? Mm. And that's where Fig Tree's involvement began with the project. And so two years ago, it became part of our missions project here. It's very exciting and it's, it's, it's always great to hear something that we've got roots in as yeah. well. Um, tell me more about the global impact of uh, EE. Well, uh, when EE as a whole, uh, as I said a little while ago, we have uh, a plan, a goal, to have a, an Indigenous ministry in as many quality nations as we can around the world. So currently we have 86 nations that have their own national boards, their own directors, uh, and they have their own teams and we help train up those leaders. So, for example, in the past couple of months while this virus has been affecting everybody, um, I've met just about every one of my national directors by being on Zoom with them. And so, globally, we do that. Hope for Kids started off in 2010. We now have 70 nations around the world which have someone teaching somebody else how to reach wow. children. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty special. Cool. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, and what I'd like to do tonight is, is, is to actually talk with some of the people who are doing this program around the world. And we're not going to take you to 70 nations, that would take us a little <laughs> while, but I would like to take you to several continents. And we're going to take you to, to hear some of the people who've helped, first of all, lead the work in Ethiopia and Africa, and then towards the end, an introduction to someone in Latin America as well. So the first person that I want to introduce you to is a man by the name of Francis. Francis originally I trained as a field worker and he's now the regional director for East Africa. And he helps us to lead the Hope for Kids ministry over East Africa. 
So here is Francis from Uganda. Greetings, Francis. Welcome to our missions conference all the way from Uganda, from Kampala. Thank Good to you. See you. Thank you for taking the time to join me here. Um, I have introduced you already as our director for East Africa, but I'd like you to tell the people here, what's been your involvement in developing hope for kids across East Africa, of course, including uh, Uganda and Ethiopia? Tell us, what, what have you been doing? Thank you, Rod, for having me on. Uh, I work in two capacities. One as, the one as the National Director for Evangelism Explosion Uganda, and the other as the uh, East Africa Ministries Area Director. And basically what I do is oversight of all the ministry operations in Uganda and in East Africa. Uh, a year or so ago, you and I visited a number of locations where children's EE yeah. E was really flourishing. What have you seen there as the benefit to children that, being trained like this? Well, the Bible instructs us to train up our children in the ways of God while they're still young so that when they grow mm. up, they will not depart from it. And you know that children have their whole lives ahead of them. That means training a child in the gospel to share the gospel means that everywhere they go, the gospel goes with them. Instead of them being misled in the, by their would-be peers, they will be the ones transforming, touching those, uh, their peers with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you know, training children in the ways of God means discipling our nations in godliness. Because you know, the children are the leaders of tomorrow. And because they are the leaders of tomorrow, you can be sure that you will, in, in the near future will have godly leaders. And godly mm. leaders means godly nations that command God's blessings. So have you seen that impact on the children already that you've seen trained? Yes, we have seen children share the gospel with their family and friends. We've wow. seen children lead their own families to Christ, things that uh, adults have not been able to do. And children are very faithful. They are very faithful. Yes. When a child tells the parent, this is where I want to go to this church, the parent has nothing to say but to follow. And yeah. in the following, the children, uh, the, the, the parents get to hear the gospel. They get to give their lives to Jesus Christ. Well, that's incredible, isn't it? Now, Francis, about two years ago, you and I trained up five field workers uh, to work for your ministry with Hope for Kids in Ethiopia. How did that training benefit them, do you think, those five men who came? First and foremost, their own lives have been transformed hmm. in the sense that they are now able to share the gospel with their own family and friends but they also are able to clarify the gospel to their congregations, most of whom are children. Mm. And these are the people that are our most uh, uh, serious targets right now. And apart from that, they are not only able to share, the, to, to, to share the gospel with the children, they are also able to train the children to share the gospel with their far parents, with their families, with their friends. But apart from that, they are also a, have, have been empowered to be able to launch the children into a life of discipleship. A life of discipleship in that now the children can, are not only able to share the gospel with their family and friends, but also train others to do the same. You see the point? Mm. So the children yeah, yeah. are being discipled. And third, these people being ministry leaders and major children ministry coordinators, they have been empowered. Now they have the competencies to grow their children ministries in their nations and disciple their nations for Christ. Wow. So, Francis, what do you see now is the potential for Hope for Kids across the work you're doing in Ethiopia? And you mentioned to me some other nations where doors are opening, right? Yeah. Uh, Rod, there is an enormous potential like never before. Hopeful kids in, in East Africa, first of all, alone, when you look at it, we have 40% of the entire population of East Africa nations, the nations that I give oversight to, 
40% of their population are under the age of 15. That is 121.4 million people. Wow. That are, are below the age of 15. Because 40%, that is out of 303.6 million people mm. that are in the nine East African nations that I give oversight to. 121.4 million are children. Below the, age of, below the age of 15. Now, looking at that, that gives us a high, 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 high uh, potential. Because you yeah. know that in the church in East Africa, and, not, and maybe even Africa, 75% of ministry leaders, church, uh, children, uh, church leaders, children, uh, ministry leaders, are not trained. They don't have any formal training as to yes. how they should lead these churches. And that tells you a lot that training in hope for kids is the best thing that has happened for us in, uh, in, 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 in East Africa. In Ethiopia, there are many millions of children, of course, associated with churches. But what's the religious context there that the churches have to deal with? Large Islamic populations, right? And what, how does that impact things? Uh, Ethiopia, first of all, like you said, has a population of 110. And I want yeah. to tell you that about 43% of the, uh, that population are uh, Orthodox. And others are Muslim, Muslims. So when you look at four, uh, 110 million people, Ethiopia, the percentage of children below the age of 15, is 43% of the 110 million people. And I want to thank God for uh, yeah, the church that uh, is, rallying, uh, is right behind me in doing this work. May you send my regards, my appreciation to them. It was great to hear from Francis. And I think next up, we're going to hear a little bit from Rebecca. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about Rebecca before we see her presentation? Sure. Well, Rebecca and another gentleman by the name of Abraham, uh, which is a very popular name in Christians amongst Africa, Abraham and Rebecca work with Scripture Union. And about four years ago, I met them and introduced them to the Hope for Kids program. And so they've been helping us to develop the work in Ethiopia. Uh, we've, As you'll see, we've trained up some others, but they've been the key people and uh, it's been difficult to get hold of them, so I appreciate them tonight. In Ethiopia, they shut down the entire internet for three weeks because of the virus and terrorism. But here is Rebecca sharing with us her impressions of Hope for Kids Ministry in Ethiopia. Thank you very much for joining our missions conference this week. All the way from uh, Ethiopia, and currently you're in Addis Ababa, and you're there tonight with your children who will probably hop in and out of the picture, maybe. <laughs> so thank you for being with us. And um, I thank you for the great work you've been doing in partnership with me and the team on Hope for Kids. Um, and I wonder if you could begin by sharing with us a little bit about how you see that this Hope for Kids program benefits the children. Well, you know, uh, this training uh, for us, uh, it's a beautiful training, actually. So it gives our kids a summarized package of gospel uh, in a very interesting and entertaining and a very engaging way of presentation. The repetitions and the sequences, the content, the focuses, it's very clear and exciting for the kids. Uh, so this is one thing. So the other thing is that, uh, and the unique, the very unique uh, part of this is the practical, the practicality of witnessing. It's an amazing and unique part of the hope for kids training for us because uh, every lesson encourages to share not only with the word but uh, um, home tech objects makes witnessing fun and interesting. Most importantly, it helps the, them to take uh, witnessing as part of 
their life for the kids. And that is really wonderful. It excites them to witness, you know, they have this material, a gift to give for the kids. And plus, they have a clear knowledge of uh, what they're going to say. And they do it in a very fun and inter in interesting way. So um, it's benefiting our kids, really. Well, we have heard many stories, stories like, you know, uh, kids going uh, they get this training and they go out to tell uh, for their friend this and they, they do it like it's not like um, what they are told to do but they are happy to do it also so we have heard these stories from uh, one of our partner Pastor Marcus that you know the pastor and there, uh, there, there were these two kids who go out to learn first they, they get the training and they go out to uh, witness for their friends around the neighbors and they go out and they tell them and they, they give these books and they were so very excited we, we, heard, we heard so many stories like this uh, from especially from the northern side of Ethiopia because that's what most, most of our training has done. And uh, I think I'll, I'll say um, for our kids, it makes um, witnessing part of their life. It makes it easier for them. It makes it fun for them. What potential do you see for Hope for Kids in Ethiopia? Well, um, Given our uh, population number, we are, uh, we are a country of more than 100 million people and we do have a big number of children and churches or other Christian organizations working with children are not developing strong materials as EE books uh, or Hope for uh, Kids training yet. And especially in the Muslim uh, areas and in the northern uh, part of Ethiopia, it's not touched yet. So the number of children and the lack of materials as strong training uh, uh, or strong trainings are the potentials uh, to grow up in Ethiopia. As I have seen, it is not about big numbers, but uh, it's about changing life. It's, it focuses on the gospel changing. Uh, children's lives and also encourages uh, witnessing. So it focuses on the life of children to grow in the word of God. So uh, so it helps also uh, children to meet Holy Spirit and witnessing. And this is exactly what we lack and we need as a country. So uh, Hope for Kids has the potential to change this in our country. I want to thank you for your partnership with us. It's been really encouraging and you've been a great great leader for us in this process uh, i want to thank you uh, very much and we, we we have learned a lot and we have you have equipped us a lot and also our partners so we want to thank you god bless you and we we also want to thank your church for helping us it's really exciting and we love you for it well thank you rebecca who have we got next rod well next we've got peter and chisomo um, these are a delightful young African couple who are serving with us in Hope for Kids in Uganda. Actually, they met in Malawi several years ago, seven or eight years ago, when I was doing a training program there. They subsequently got married, and now they are working in Uganda, having head, headed up the Hope for Kids program in several different parts, as you'll hear, of Uganda, an inspiring young couple. So tell me something to help uh, people listening. How long have you been serving with EE in Uganda? Um, uh, let's begin with me. Um, I've been serving with uh, EE Uganda for seven years. Uh, I moved into Uganda due to marriage. And since then, um, up to now, I've been part of the EE family in Uganda. Wonderful. Yeah, I, Peter, you come from Uganda, right? I come from Malawi. <laughs> no, Peter. Peter comes from Uganda. Yes, I joined EE in 2012, so uh, that makes it uh, um, eight, nine, nine years yeah. this year. And together, my wife, we've been serving for from 2013. That is uh, wonderful. Seven. Yeah. Now you started you started off in Kampala, and now you've moved to Arua. Why did you move up to the border area? So the reason we moved to the border area, uh, we saw an opportunity uh, because uh, uh, the refugees had started coming in from South Sudan and they were uh, being allocated to occupy the western 
uh, Nile region of Uganda, mm -hmm. specifically a place called uh, uh, West Nile. We call it West Nile. So there was an mm -hmm. opportunity for us to come up uh, uh, Evangelism Explosion here in the West Nile, because having been that Sudan was just coming on as a nation, South Sudan was a new nation and was um, he has never been there. And now that the people of South Sudan were coming in as refugees, that staying in the West thing. Nile, so it was an opportunity for us to come and uh, share with them the gospel yeah. and also introduce evangelism explosion in South Sudan. Yeah. Well, that's great. Now, you've been specializing in hope for kids. So how many children are there in that refugee camp that uh, I came and visited with you a year or so ago? Tell me about the number of kids there. Uh, I would like to begin uh, by letting you know, Rod, that um, uh, Uganda as a, as a nation, it has uh, over a million um, refugee camps, I mean uh, refugees. But West now, to be specific, uh, it has about uh, 7,000 children. 75,000. Wow. Yes. And, and, uh, and uh -huh. go on. Let me to you on that, it has about 752,000 uh, refugees, of which um, 65 of those are children. 65 percent. 65%. Yeah, 65,000. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so how is Hope for Kids effective in this very, very difficult situation? Um, I think it's good for you to know that um, when we came in 2017, um, we, we had uh, a privilege of introducing Hope for Kids uh, in, in a few of the settlements, actually 48 of the settlements, we had a privilege of introducing a few of those Hope for Kids uh, with um, and, uh, 1,471 children by then were trained in our three workshops we had. And then uh, the, the trained teachers were 109 that were trained back then, which is uh, three years ago. And uh, I would say the number of churches that were at least encountered, there were 55. So it, it, it had a lot of potential eh, to, to influence um, the clarity of the gospel in the South, South Sudan refugees camp if there's a continuation of hope for kids in there. Wow. So, Peter, you've been training also the leaders there in, in the camp uh, to help us with, to help you with the work. How many leaders have been trained? Um, normally, our criteria of choosing leaders is uh, we have uh, uh, people who come in the training, and then out of those, those that have shown good understanding of the material, they are chosen to be able to uh, continue uh, mobilizing others for training. So out of the 109 people who are trained, we were able to raise uh, 30 leaders, able to encourage them to get the clarity of the material that we are teaching. So we're working with 20 leaders. And those leaders, are they training the children there now? Or are they training Sunday school teachers or both? When we review the numbers that were trained by, uh, all together before they moved, I would say that uh, all those uh, leaders, they had uh, come back to train like uh, uh, 800 more leaders. Wow. So what impact do you think this is having in giving hope to those children? So the impact of uh, hope for kids to the children all goes all the way to the background of our uh, of the refugees and yeah. uh, their country. So as we say that uh, uh, South Sudan, non different from any other African nation right now, you can say that it's 60 to 70% young generation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the people of South Sudan, they have hope that this young generation will be able to grow up in a, in a, with a different setup. They'll be able to grow up without tribalism. They'll be able to grow up uh, without the bitterness that they have experienced in all these uh, years of the wars, right away yeah. from the Pacific, the southern yeah. country, and then breaking away. Mm -hmm. So the impact here is very, very vivid and very great that uh, if we unnest the children and give them the gospel, then we are helping to rebuild South Sudan as a nation that fears God, as a nation that will be stable without the bitterness, without a, a lack of self-worth as their predecessors have grown up.
So uh, it will be very important that uh, we, we get to give these children the gospel again. Wow. Look, Absolutely. Look okay, now one, one more quick question for you. Um, yep. In this current situation with the virus, I know you can't go there now to the camps, but what are you hearing about the impact of the virus upon the people in the camp itself? Do you have any information? Yes, sure. Uh, most of the uh, locally local transmissions in Uganda, a uh, majority are coming from refugee settlements. Yeah, that's right. Mm. One of the reason is that uh, they they keep moving, They're trying to communal. go back home. Yeah. They try yes. to go back home at certain points to check on what they left, and because of that, of their movements through the porous borders, the local transmission are, are very obvious, and that has may has uh, brought in uh, a lot of. Uh, quarantine in the areas yeah. and uh, them being restricted from moving from one place to another. Their places of worship are closed and they, the gospel cannot be preached in a communal way. Yeah. And that mm. makes one call for kids kind of training and EE training mm. becoming more of uh, the only tool that they can look at. Now, for every 80s child like me, there might have been a fixation on Ethiopia, but you did mention Latin America a little mm -hmm. earlier on. Indeed. Where were you going with that? Well, in Latin America, uh, we have a very, very strong ministry with evangelism explosion in Latin America. And they have incredible needs in Latin America, uh, as you will hear during the course of this week. Even education amongst people there is very, very low in the churches. But we have a wonderful man who is my vice president for Latin America, and he has helped us start the ministry and head it up Hope for Kids in Latin America. So he's going to tell us a little bit, just a short bit about the introduction and the new things that are happening as a result of the virus in Latin America. Sounds great. Uh, you've, been, you've been involved with E for a long time, but how long have you been passionate about Hope for Kids? Well, uh, it, it was something like kind of... Uh, coincidence from God because when I started to be a VP back in 2010 the project also was starting the Hope for Kids project so I have been involved since the beginning uh, with our countries in, the, in, in Latin America they have been involved and we have been working with uh, Hope for Kids since its start. And what, what have you seen as the impact of Hope for Kids across Latin America. How many countries in Latin America would be using the training? Well, actually, uh, almost we have 21 countries, but only 16 are um, multiplying nations. And from those, almost every of the countries are using Hope for Kids some way or the other. In some countries, we are much more active, like uh, I can tell you about Mexico, about Guatemala, about uh, Venezuela. And um, Ecuador has last year was very, very impressive what they did. And uh, in the, now and Bolivia is starting with a new uh, national director and they are working really good. And Colombia is very active. You know, we have a lot of countries really active. Dominican Republic, I should say, very active. Yeah. Cuba, also Cuba. And we mostly do face-to-face uh, -face classes. So we cannot do that at this pandemic time. So what we're working on, and we're pretty, and with your help, and uh, we have been working on what we call Good News Online. We are aiming this class with two purposes. The first one is to teach pastors and church leaders and parents to share the gospel with children. That's wow. what they will find, find here. But also with this, as it have, has all the elements from Hope for Kids, we are promoting what we can teach the children in the church. We have everything set up to do the, let me, let me get my face out of the, <laughs> of the picture. Of the picture. The, the thing is, it will be kind of online, but the, the, the class will be live. Live, live. It, Oh, yeah, wow. so we make, uh, we plan uh, two, one to two weeks before, before, and then the people sign in and they agree 
to come to the class and they agree with uh, we sharing emails with them. So we don't violate any spam yeah, yeah. things and all that. And then when they take the class, we send them uh, a participation certificate, with, which is good. Wow. wow. Well, and that will start soon. So it will, we're going to pray for you that that is really effective. And many churches will then start sharing the gospel with their kids and then ultimately teaching them. So thank you for taking the time to join with us today and to help us with that vision. May God bless you richly as you do it. Thank you for the for inviting me and, and, and blessings to the church, to your church and the missions. And uh, please invest in visions because it's the best way to get there. If you cannot go, you send people and we are ready to go. Thank you very much. <laughs> and so God sure. bless you all. Thank you, Rod. So, Rod, it was great that we could hear from you, but also uh, from some of the agents around the world as well. Um, I wonder if you might tell us just a little bit more about how do we be a part of this as well? How does our partnership here work with uh, EE Hope for Kids? Well, that's a really great question. Um, one of my very clear prayers is that God will raise some people up uh, in Fig Tree Church who might want to go and do some short-term ministry in Africa and perhaps working amongst children. Uh, there are a lot of countries where English is spoken well um, and we have the opportunities for people to go in, help, and then come back and do short-term ministry with them. So the, the, the opportunities are there. Obviously, Fig Tree helps enormously with its generous gift to the project because it enables us to fund travel inside Ethiopia for the countries to come and also in the refugee camp. So we're funding the ability for those guys there. So it's a great partnership and Fig Tree, we are really, I really value that. It's been incredible. And you don't even begin to know the number, the millions actually, of people that are likely to be impacted. Uh, one of the things you didn't hear on the video was in Ethiopia, over 550 churches have been trained in two years since Fig Tree started helping us to do that. Right. And the leader there tells me those 550 churches have ministry to several million children. Pretty exciting. It's so that's a great exciting. partnership. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, I think I might take your ch your prayer and make it our prayer right now. Um, so I'm going to pray that God might be continuing Amen. to raise up uh, those who might be interested in participating and also thank him for what he has done already. Uh, Amen. Let's let's pray for E Hope for Kids. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the God of mission and we thank you that you are the God of all nations, uh, gathering every tribe, tongue and nation under the name of the Lord Jesus Christ into your kingdom. And Father, we want to thank you especially for uh, those we've heard from tonight. We thank you for uh, the amazing work that you've been able to do through EE Hope for Kids, for the lives that have been changed, for the eternities that have been secured, for the evangelists who have been raised up, and uh, for your gospel being shared, uh, not just with individuals, but are uh, being shared in such a way that individuals become sharers of this good news. Father God, we want to pray now as well that uh, you might be stirring in the hearts and minds of some of us as well. That, uh, Lord God, you might speak to someone now and place it on their heart that they might want to be sent to be a part of the EE Hope for Kids project in Ethiopia. That uh, you might want to use them as your mouthpiece, as your hands and feet. Uh, to continue to make the good news of Jesus known and to continue to equip others to share the good news of the God who has come, taken on flesh and made God known to everyone who has ears to hear. And so, Father, we make that our prayer tonight. We pray for Rod as well and for the whole EE team that you might continue to keep them fresh in Jesus and uh, keep this vision alight in them. And we pray that we might uh, celebrate the partnership we share with EE here at Fig Tree Anglican as well. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, it's been a great night to join with you. I hope you've been enjoying the week thus far and that you'll tune in again tomorrow night for uh, just more exciting things as we continue on this missions conference. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you then.
mission is so important. It's really important here locally, but it's also important around the world. So we're glad that you could join us for this focus on world mission. As you're watching these videos during this week, we're asking you to respond. We're asking you to respond in two ways. The first is to pray. We would love you to pray for mission around the world. We'd love you to pray and ask God that his gospel would be changing lives around the world as he promised it would. And we'd love you to pray for our mission partners. So if you jump on the website, you can download a PDF under the section in World Missions Conference. You'll find that PDF and it's got details and prayer points for our mission partners. That's the first way. The second way we'd love you to respond is through giving. This is the time of year where we focus on raising support for our mission partners. Now, I've got to say, we recognise in these COVID times, some people are under severe financial stress. And by no means we want to put any pressure on you at all. In fact, uh, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9, 7, he says, each of you should give what you've decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly, not under any compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So if you've got that ability and you're able to give, we'd love you to do that. And you can do that either through direct debit or we have a new system uh, that we've set up through the tithing app on the Fig Tree website. And it gives you the option to simply click on the option that you'd like to give to. And we've also got a special mission fund that we would love you to give to because we know that under these times, our mission partners are also in a big strain, so we don't want them to miss out either. And putting into that mission fund will encourage those funds to be distributed according to the needs of the partners. Thanks for joining us for this special presentation about the work of E Hope for Kids in Ethiopia. We hope you've been really encouraged. You can now watch this video anytime here on Fig Tree TV on YouTube. And if you want to jump on Facebook, if you're in our internal group, we'd love to hear what you thought. Uh, as well as that, we want to encourage you that tomorrow night, as part of the World's Missions Conference, jump back in here at 7.30pm and we're going to have a special presentation from our friends in Dubai. Uh, many of you know them and it's going to be, I can't tell you how much, super encouraging and a real blessing to watch. So please join us 7.30pm here on Fig Tree TV. Thank you so much for being a part of the Fig Tree Anglican World's Missions.